Welcome to the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube. This is our Awakening Together weekly gathering. Each and every week we have a different minister who speaks. If you'd like to attend our services live, please visit our website awakening-together.org. Click on Online Sanctuary on the main menu. Then, how to enter the sanctuary. Our services are held Sundays at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary. Hi, welcome everyone to our weekly gathering. Uh, it's good to be here with you all. Um, looking forward to where this will go. Okay, so right now I'm going to read our statement of purpose. Our purpose. We are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to one true self. Within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, and many symbols, we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. Um, so, uh, I, based on what I will be sharing today, I chose core value number three, which is we accept one true self, which is one presence or being, non-dual, without beginning or end, and absolutely changeless. We live this value by practicing letting go of the belief in the individual self as who we are. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to take us into prayer. Um, Mother, Father, God, Thank you for this time that we're sharing together. May this be a blessing to everyone that's here and who will be listening. And may we all be able to open to the truth that is within our hearts. Amen. So now we're going to... Um, listen to a reading. I chose uh, NTI 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 17, uh, 1 through 12, which will be read by Reverend Manuela Giroli. Uh, the mic is yours, Manuela. Uh, thank you. Just checking you can hear me. Yeah, it's a new computer and the, the volume sort of goes off okay so it's on page 291 in the book mm. i am with you to bring back the memory of who you are with me you shall remember because you recognize yourself in me do not make the mistake of forgetting who i am when you do know i am you i am your truth when you forget to remember what you know, you pretend to be what you are not. When you pretend to be what you are not, you believe what you think, and you think you are different from that which you are. I ask you to lay your thinking aside, and with it you lay aside all pretending that isn't true. This is to make yourself an empty shell. An empty shell is not the absence of you. An empty shell is the absence of delusion, which you are not. Thank you. Thank you, Manuela. I am going to be allowing all the fluttering and nervousness and mind chattering um, to be embraced and just breathe. Um, so uh, the body is kind of like all over the place. So I'm just gonna speak it. I'm gonna get it out there um, and move forward. So, um, so yes, I chose uh, NTI, first Corinthians. And what was interesting about this, that when I chose this, 
um, when I first read it, it I didn't exactly read. When I reread it again a couple days later, I saw that the meaning was um, quite different than what what I saw. Um, so with the line, it was um, line three of of NTI current. Uh, First Corinthians, it says, do not make the mistake of forgetting who I am when you do know. Um, and when, you know, I was led to read this again, like I said, while I was contemplating um, on Friday afternoon, and that line is what made me cho choose the reading. Uh, what I understood when I first read it um, it was not to forget our truth, Holy Spirit, when we think we know. Um, so I thought that was very interesting. Um, after reading it again, I see that that was not the meaning, but it was what I, need, I needed. I needed that um, in that moment. Um, when I choose to listen to the thinking mind, it's because I think it knows. Um, I believe it has answers that I need. Um, with that, there's grasping, there's anxiety, there's desperation and fear. Um, it's frantically seeking for answers to my problem. And um, when I slow down and I breathe, and felt what was being experienced in the body, there was a slowing down. There was an embrace and an acceptance. And when that happened, the mind was still. I was able to see not from the mind. I saw all the crazy attempts it was making to make it all better. And, um, and from that place, there was an actual... Um, there was actually a kindness being felt towards it uh, and knowing of it's just trying to take on what it's not for it to take on. And I felt love and I felt love move in and through it, um, through me and my body, um, not in words, but as a feeling of embrace that that's when I understood that all healing, all answers can only come from that place of opening and wholeness, which is always there and available. Um, when I, the difficult moment that I was going through was something that had to do with my daughter. Um, my daughter's 13. Um, as we all know, it's that's a really tough age that we're trying to figure stuff out, figure out who we are. Um, and she's really struggling um, with um, social anxiety. And two really good friends of hers that she's known for since she was very little, um, they've been ignoring her and they're not being they're not understanding why she's not talking. Um, so she's experienced a lot of rejection from them um, and ignoring. And as a mom, um, it's incredibly painful to have to witness that. Um, and, you know, there's so many things that come up. I mean, this is something that I believe that is called to be healed. I know that it's a lot of um, old stuff that's been coming up because of this, my own um, experiences of rejection. And then on top of that layer is the whole mama bear type of thing of wanting to protect my child from being hurt. Uh, so this has been going on for quite some time. So there's been a lot of practice <laughs> that I've been able to, um, to have here with this, this problem. Um, so I feel like, uh, you know, I would give it over. I would, you know, ask for help. But still, there was this part of me that felt like I could go to the mind when it 
constantly kept telling me that it had an answer. I had to figure this out. Um, so I guess it came to like, um, I mean, it, I completely acted out on everything, on all the emotions, on what the mind was telling me. And when I was dropping my daughter off one morning, um, and I, I just, it just ripped into me seeing these girls just like walk away from her. <laughs> and they're saying hello to another friend of hers that's there and ignoring her. And I just lowered the window and I'm like, you know, I told my daughter, why don't you just say hello? You know, why don't you make sure you say hello to the, to the one friend that's saying hello to you or, you know, paying attention to you. And I was like, I could not believe I did that, <laughs> that I just let it just blurt out like that. Um, thankfully, I didn't, I could have said something worse and thankfully I didn't, but I, I'm sure my daughter was mortified <laughs> and I'm hoping that, you know, I don't think maybe the girls didn't hear me. I don't know. Um, but needless to say, I was really shaken up by that. And um, in the past, I would have completely, um, completely beaten myself up over that. So thankfully, um, there's been some progress here where I didn't go down that path. Um, what it did was it shook me up and kind of... Um, sitting with, you know, why is this so powerful? Why is this so huge? Um, and just wanting to be done with it, just wanting it to be gone, like the problem to be gone. Not so much, yes, it would be nice if, if, that, if everything would be fixed within this little group of friends. Um, that would be very satisfying to, to my ego, to the person me, uh, but also for the healing inside of me. Um, I just, just wanted to be done with it. Like, why am I allowing this to happen? So I had, I couldn't take it anymore. So I reached out to beautiful Anne, <laughs> who's been uh, my rock many times when I just can't, I feel like I just can't handle it anymore. And a lot of the times, you know, I, there have been many times when I have done root cause inquiry, but I feel like for certain moments, it's just feeding more into mind in the story. Cause I'm just, it's just regurgitating over and over again, because I I'm just not, it's not available that, that, that openness or that embracing it's not available at that moment when the mind is just my mind is just spinning so um thankfully um and was moved to do something different with me um which was to just breathe she just told me breathe just what feelings are occurring in your body where are you feeling it put your hand on what you're feeling um and just breathe into it and i remember distinctively my mind saying at that moment this isn't going to do anything this isn't going to solve my problem this isn't going to take it away this is ridiculous this is stupid so but i did it anyway because i had nowhere else to go I had no, I had no other thing that would help. So, okay. The mind was chattering. Um, it's constantly looking at the problem and I just followed because I was very willing. I was very willing to move or to allow something in me just wanted to go with this. So I did. Uh, and once I started breathing and feeling what I was feeling. And the one thing that Anne had said to me while we were doing this together was, you know, this character, this person um, is going through this difficult moment right now. And, um, you know, like if you're watching a movie, you're kind of rooting for that character. Sometimes it's the character is going through some great times and sometimes the character is going through something that's awful or 
you know, something that, that, you know, that's seen as bad, um, but you're still rooting for them. And something in that hearing that it's like something in me needed to hear that. And um, there was just like this dropping, I felt in my heart. And (laughs) sorry, this opening (laughs) that um, it seems like, you know, I've been there I've been there plenty of times, um, but for some reason, there was just this embrace, this allowing um, of just everything, what what was happening at that moment. And um, that's why I was able to really, like, from that place to see how much this mind is just always trying to figure it out get it right um and i felt even compassion for that um so it was um very moving for me and i felt um i felt led uh just after and you know after that experience, I just was led to, you know, first Corinthians to that reading. And what I saw was, <laughs> it was, um, what I understood was, you know, like that line where it says, do not make the mistake of forgetting who I am. And then I saw when you think you do know, when the mind thinks it knows, um, you forget. It's easy to forget um, because you're so lost in everything the mind is doing. Um, you get completely, or I get completely caught up in it. Um, and that's the mistake. That's the mistake is listening um, because it's so subtle. You know, it, it just creeps in uh, very easily. And Um, you know, I actually, you know, I didn't even think I would be able to, um, do this gathering today because I was hit with, um, some very, (laughs) um, difficult, uh, news yesterday. And, um, it was one of those things of, finding out something where it was like, I felt like a gut punch. Um, and it was just, it felt like the wind was knocked out of my being. And I just didn't know what, what to do, where to go, who, how to get this out, how, what, what to do. There was like, the only thing I could do was run into my van. I live in a small home and both my kids were here. And, um, I just went into my van and I just started crying because I just, it was like at that moment, it's like, yes, the mind was going in all these directions. Well, what what if this happens? And what if this is going to happen? What is that? You know, it's going to just make it's worse and worse and worse. But then it was just like, I had nowhere else to run. I had nowhere else to go. And it just like, my, I was just like, just staring, just staring into nothingness, um, because, um, I felt like my back was up against the wall and I was out of moves. (laughs) So I just had to be with it. Um, and, um, surprisingly enough, uh, because I did ask for guidance, I did ask, um, for my mind to get out of the way which is what I constantly was doing before um, leading this gathering. Um, I, that was the fear. The fear is, oh, the mind is going to come and take over. Um, but what I always have to remind myself is that the willingness is stronger. And I was very willing. Um, and I was able to um, just let... Um, love flow and um and i'm okay 
and here I am um, and accepting all of it, um, accepting everything that the mind is saying um, based on um, what it believes to be wrong, um, to believe, um, you know, I, you know, right before, you know, you know, this happening in the gathering, you know, I just felt the nerves just creeping in and taking over completely. <laughs> I mean, I still feel the buzzing and, um, you know, I, of course, I just, I had to write out what the mind was saying and the things it was saying was just, how could I not feel afraid <laughs> if I was believing all of that? I mean, it was just saying, you're going to fail at this. You will do horribly. Everyone will know you're a fraud and that you should, you know, have never agreed to do this. You don't know what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. You know, you'll make a mistake and a fool of yourself and everyone will judge and criticize you. You know, all the, all that nice stuff that the mind likes to come up with thinking that it's protecting us. Um, <laughs> And the biggest fear was, of course, you know, you won't let Holy Spirit flow and it will all be fake. Um, so I just let it all out. And when I let it all out, you know, obviously, you know, there's all these feelings that are happening in the body and, you know, the feelings that were wrapped up with all those thoughts, of course, were fear and anxiety and sadness and feeling alone. And then the tears would come up and um, you know, it just got to the point where I was like, you know what? Um, I, I, obviously, I asked, are these thoughts true? <laughs> and um, a part of me said, well, I don't know. You know, some of it feels very true, but despite, despite everything that the mind is saying, I'll speak anyway. Um, and if it is true and I fail like it thinks I'll fail, then I'll have the information that this is not for me to do again. But I decided then um, to move forward with it, you know, with it anyway. So um, I just, you know, that's, that's, I just have to accept that that's where I'm at right now and surrendering constantly um, to be just willing when the mind just wants to take over. Cause I feel like there's such a strong connection at least here in this whole thing where when the mind is so wrapped up in fear that the body just feels it everywhere. And there's this huge amount of fear that there's just, I'm just going to burst. Like, I'm just it's like, you know, it's just going to completely take over where I'm just not going to exist anymore. <laughs> so, uh, and, but yet here I am. <laughs> so I guess it's not true. I guess whatever the mind is saying is not true. And um, yeah, so I, I am grateful um, that I'm able to just focus on this difficulty that um, I'm experiencing right now um, because I also felt not, you know, I felt... Um, guided to focus only on one struggle or one difficult belief that I was challenged with at the moment because I felt very scattered. I felt like, oh, this needs to be healed. Oh, this needs to be healed. Oh, I mean, there's so much. I mean, it's like such a long list of things that <laughs> if we really start writing it down, um, and my mind was just focused on everything that's not right, everything that needs to be fixed. And quite honestly, I mean, if I really am honest with it all, it's really just 
yes, there's this problem I, it, that I'm facing with a challenge right now with my, my child and it's going into unknown waters, which brings up a lot of fear and um, within because there is, there is no knowing. And there is and there isn't because I know where my mind wants to go and I don't want to repeat the same patterns uh, from my past onto her. And, but yet sometimes it still does. I, I, um, I guess the ultimate thing is just accepting where I am in this moment and trusting that um, my willingness is going to take me where it is that I need to go. Um, so I'm just, I, I don't know what else to say right now. Uh, <laughs> um, so I guess, I guess, um, just, I don't know. I just feel um, like this quiet within my heart <laughs> right now, uh, which is not such a bad thing. I, I just don't want, you see right now, I feel like the mind is just wanting to fill space right now, wanting, it's feeling very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, and it's okay. It's okay if it's feeling uncomfortable um, because the, of course, my mind wants me to believe that um, it needs to do something. It needs to give something to everyone that's here. And it's obviously not going to be good enough, but I know that's not true. <laughs> I know that's not true. And I know everyone here is so loving and embracing and it's, um, yeah, I mean, that's the gymnastics, the mental gymnastics that go on constantly and being able to discern between what, um, not getting lost not getting completely lost in the mental gymnastics and being able to just be okay with the uncomfortableness and be okay with um, the not knowing because, you know, I did, like I did write out things that I wanted to talk about today, obviously, but I really wanted to be open to spirit and open to allow truth to to speak. Um, and that's, you know, I, that's all I can do. Um, I, this is, like I said, this is very difficult for me because, um, a lot of the times, although I do feel very comfortable when I share with my group on Tuesdays, because I, I already know everyone so well. Um, but this does not come very easy <laughs> for me. Um, but I'm very grateful for, um, being willing to share with all of you, um, regardless of what my mind is telling me right now. So since I'm not really being moved to say much, I guess maybe, um, we can go into a prayer um, before moving on. So, okay. Holy Mother, Father God, thank you for always being here, regardless of my acknowledgement when I'm still, when I am quiet, I feel your presence and I know that you're always here. 
a lot of the times you are not felt or seen because there is this chattering that's constantly blocking what is here always. And I know that all our willingness, all of us are open to living from that place, living from our truth, from our hearts, from going from that chattering, knowing mind and dropping into our hearts where you dwell and where our truth lies. All, the, all our seeming problems just melt because you are the answer to all that ails us, all that disturbs us. And I'm just so very grateful. I'm so grateful for your guidance, for your love, and for your embrace. And I know that I'll learn as we will all learn to embrace every part of you, every part of ourselves in gratitude. Amen. So um, I, I know I'm probably finishing up a little early. Um, than my allotted time. <laughs> uh, so I like. I think now I'd like to ask uh, Sina if she would play um, my second song, if that's okay. Um, and during the song, I'd like to remind everyone that they can donate to Awakening Together uh, by clicking on the link. Uh, Sino will post in the chat or by using the QR code in the sanctuary. Ah, I love that song. It just pierces right into my heart. Uh, so at this time, uh, would anyone like say, to share? I love you so much. Um, I, I am so moved by your courage and uh, your clarity and So Marisol, this is, this is, so I can make anything about me. And so just so you know, this is all about me today. Um, I, I learned about Awakening Together and met everybody about five years ago. And we went to India and I went to that retreat and I was like in the St. Francis Center. And you know, I, I kind of started to get it. I'm like, I, I was in gentle healing, the one that Regina was teaching. I'm like, wait a second. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of get this. And I got, I got ever so slightly comfortable ever so slightly comfortable and then all of a sudden i got a call from jacqueline and regina and uh the new gentle healing group that they had started that rebecca gibson reverend rebecca gibson was leading she had uh gotten guidance to step away from that uh and my memory is that marisol was an mpp when regina started gentle healing and she really wanted to do gentle healing and regina said you know what you're an mpp that you just too both of them, we all know, doing too much is not doing anything deeply. And so it was because, my memory is it's because of Marisol that we even had a second gentle healing start up. And so, and so they called and said, would you facilitate gentle healing? And I'm like, I, what are you talking about? I got, I got no idea. I don't know anything. I don't. And they're like, uh -huh. and, uh -huh. and, and we don't have anyone else. And so, I mean, it was lovely. They were like, honey, it's you or it's, you know. And so I did. And I did, and I just stepped into it. And I had no idea. And Marisol showed up, and we have showed up together every Tuesday morning for over three years. And we have just brought the fullness of whatever was going on. I dare say we learned together to dance in the eye of a hurricane. And I dare say that Marisol 
teach me how to stay. Because you can only dance in the eye of a hurricane if you truly desire to stay. As Regina says, the way you heal something is you let it flourish. And you're like, flourish? I can barely breathe. And it's like, well, okay, but check, you're breathing. Can you let it flourish? And what Marisol has taught me from the beginning, and she taught me again today, is you can stand in the middle of that hurricane. You can speak the truth of how uncomfortable it is, and you can allow it to flourish. And guess what? A, it doesn't kill you. Look, I see her breathing. And B, here we are. Mind falls away. We don't. The truth doesn't. The presence holds. And so I, I love you. I thank you, my friend. And I just honor you. Regina. All right. Good morning, everyone. And yeah, I wanted to say something which actually kind of interestingly follows what Anne said. But, you know, I heard Marisol say that, you know, something happened yesterday. She received some news yesterday, felt like she was hit in the gut and um, didn't know if she would be able to do this. I can't tell you, you know, in my early days, like the first five years, how many times that happened. When I came to the microphone, so friggin' upset, especially when I was, you know, uh, you know, in the midst of something huge, uh, where all I wanted to do was be in my bedroom alone, and my t my little time came up on the on the clock to come come. Then it was pal talk to come into pal talk and teach, and um, I showed up anyway, uh, and that was always, 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 always always helpful i mean there's never an exception to that i remember in english class you know the teacher always said never use the word always or never use the word never of course there's a never right in that sentence never use the word never um but it was always 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 helpful to show up and teach whatever was on my plate to teach um and it was always helpful to be honest the way Marisol was honest today, just to say what was going on. I always left feeling lighter, clearer, more aware of what was going on. So, and I also heard Marisol at the end say something like, I don't know if I'll ever do this again. And I want to say, ah, don't say that. <laughs> that's the opposite of what's helpful say you know what no matter what i am going to do this again no matter what my mind is saying about whether i did a good job i've seen people quit because their mind said they didn't know how to do this wrong answer i've seen people quit because their mind was telling them how great they are wrong answer in both cases do you know you're quitting because you're listening to the ego you know, you show up, you ignore the ego, you show up, you get as humble as possible, and you teach. You know, the only way to um, be the truth is to be the truth. That's the only way. The only way is to be the truth is to be the truth. So you just keep coming back, no matter what that mind is saying, and then you, you come here with the commitment to be the truth. That's that's it. So uh, so the first answer, Marisol was right to show up, even if you felt hit in the gut. The second thought, Marisol was wrong about the allowing the possibility of not coming back. You know, what I mean, you just keep coming and you just keep being the truth to the best of your ability. And you know, I was telling Jacqueline the other day that because I'm going through all of these old audios, right? And, and so I'm listening to things that I have certainly forgotten. And it's, it's, it's interesting having all of these memories of, of, of what I've gone through come back. And there was this one particular audio. It's an hour long teaching. And through the entire teaching, the pace of my speaking is just like this and it's so funny because at the end of the audio this one friend um 
comments like I'm commenting now and he says something like I admire you Regina how you know you pause and you're just listening for wisdom and you know it's almost like he's putting me on a pedestal in his comment and after his comment I come back and I say well thank you very much of course I'm speaking much slower but I'm not going to put you guys through that right now but I say well thank you very much but the real reason I'm pausing is because there's so much going on in my mind right now. And in fact, I was under an ego attack at the time. And I don't talk about what was going on, but I, I comment that the reason I was talking so slow is because I'm literally letting go of the ego and listening for clarity as I'm speaking. I mean, that's what's going on. I'm right there during an ego attack, doing this hour-long teaching, letting go of the ego and speaking live. And so... I'm talking like this, right? Um, but I also told Jacqueline, I said, but I realized, and this is so important, guys. <laughs> what I realized when I was listening back to the audios is that's when the I am bad thought died. I've never known when that happened. I knew it happened, but I've never known when it happened. But when I listened to those audios, I realized that was the last one. That was the I will never be good enough thought. I will never be good enough thought that was coming up for me during that time period. You know, I can look back and know the calendar and know what was going on. And I can search my mind after that event. Did that thing, did that I am bad belief ever come up again in any other flavor? And it never did. It never did. So even though I'm in the, in the midst of this, I will never be good enough thought. I will never be good enough thought. I'm just continuing on with my guidance, which includes showing up and teaching at a certain time. And by moving forward with the truth, even while the untruth was as loud as it could be in my head, you see how I was making a decision about what I was going to stick with, what I was going to believe, and what I was going to ignore, not repress, but ignore. I mean, I'm actively ignoring all of that in my mind while I'm teaching. You see? And that's where the healing came from. So always stick with the truth, even if the untruth is very loud. That's what we're here for. Ignore, don't repress, but ignore the untruth. Let it be there, but ignore it. And again, this is why one of my favorite movies is A Beautiful Mind, right? Is That's what he does in the end of that mind. They're still right there talking to him, those characters, but he learns how to ignore them. And that's what we do. We don't repress it. We let it continue, but we learn to ignore it, listen to the truth, and live, live, live the truth. We don't act from this. We act from the truth. And so Marisol... You actually demonstrated that today. And that's what was so beautiful about this weekly gathering. You know, just demonstrating the truth, just being the truth, even though it's clear there's still untruth going on. Right. So thank you so very, very much. Release the mic. Laura Joy. Hi, thank you. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, what I was thinking and the example for me that is uh, so powerful is um, Jesus in the desert when he was being tempted. And if, if that is brought into my awareness as him having a conversation with his own mind and knowing he has the power of God to, you know, create bread out of stone or to stand at the top of a tall building in Jerusalem and be told, you know, this kingdom can be yours. And that rather than an external devil, that in his mind, he's aware he could choose for the illusion where he could stay with what's true. And so I just share that as a, an exclamation point. So thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Oh, Daniel. 
I just wanted to, uh, it, it brought to mind what you just did, uh, brought to mind a, a scene in the movie Revolver, where the, the, the lead character had a, a confrontation with his ego in an elevator. And it started screaming at him because he had gone ahead and knelt before a previous um, opponent and asked that opponent's <laughs> permission to be forgiven. And his ego just went crazy when he got on the elevator leaving that scene. And he finally just stopped and he goes, no, he says, I don't need you anymore. And uh, that kind of strength is uh, just miraculous. Yeah, thank you, Marisol. That was beautiful. Peter has his hand up. Yeah, thank you, Marisol. I want to thank you. You, you give an, uh, a gift. Uh, you show your vulnerability, and that's actually our real power. And that's the gift that you give me, and I think us all. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, all of you. Um, I'm very touched, um, and my heart is full right now um, by your love and your acceptance. So... Right now, we're going to um, listen to our last song. So <laughs> that was our last song. That was um, Swimmers by Zero Seven. And I just love that song. Um, and visually, it's just very moving. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today and um i hope everyone has a wonderful day you've been watching our online gathering it happens weekly on sundays at 10 15 a.m eastern time to join us live in the sanctuary visit our website awakening-together.org You'll want to click on Online Sanctuary in the main menu, and then in the drop-down menu, look for How to Enter the Sanctuary. Right there at the top of the page is a clickable link. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary and join with you in fellowship. Thank you again for watching. Also, please know that if you'd like to stay connected via the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. We hope to see you in the sanctuary.